G'day guys and welcome back to another Action Script 3 Quick Concepts video tutorial. In this tutorial it's going to be the big one that most people wanted. Uh, it's how to make a high scores table or high scores uh, screen basically. So it's going to be a lot more complicated than just simply having a couple of text fields on the stage and that's why this tutorial is probably going to go for a lot longer than the other ones because what we're going to be doing is connecting up to a server so we'll need a local host server or an online server if you have one going we're going to be using this um, package called amfphp to connect up to a database and that's going to be retrieving uh, data from that database and putting it into our flash movie so it's a pretty big round trip from a database to php to amfphp and then back into flash so i uh, hope you stay with me and we'll get started now so what i've done is i've mocked up this um, short little Flash movie, and this will be included in the download section in the YouTube. So just check on the link below, and you can download this. Um, what it is is nothing fancy. It's just a high scores text field with a couple of um, classic text and dynamic text um, fields put underneath. So this is just name one, name two, three, four, five, and likewise with score one, two, three, four, and all the way up to five. So this is just going to assume you've got five. Uh, names and scores for your high scores table. You can always add more if you want to, but this is what we're going to be working with. So to get started, um, I've got a USB drive here, and what I've done is I put UAMP in here. Now, what UAMP is? Let's just get back to here. It's a localhost um, Apache PHP and um, what's your last one? MySQL. That's right. Uh, to MySQL stack. So it's basically got an all-in-one uh, stack and it looks something like this. So basically this is running a local server on my machine at home. And what we're going to be doing is setting up a database in here. So go ahead and download it from this website here, uamp.com. Uh, just go to the download section. I just grabbed the RAW file and extracted it to my USB drive, which is here, and just extracted it here into my G drive. Um, if you're on a Mac, uh, UAMP is probably not going to work because it's Windows only. I think there is um, MAMP for you guys. Yeah, so if you're on a Mac, go ahead and get MAMP and the instructions should be similar to what we're doing here. Except MAMP works a little bit differently with um, loading up your localhost. So basically what you'll be doing is just typing in localhost. And you should see your MAMP here. Uh, we've got WAMP, so let's continue on with this. So what I'm going to go to now is I'm going to use my WAMP launching shell, and I'm going to open up PHP in my admin. And what we need to do is create a database here so that we can connect to it later on. So I'm just going to name my database really simple. I'm just going to call it game underscore db, and go to create. And then in this database, we're going to have just one table, and that's going to be called high scores. We're going to have three fields in that, and go ahead and create that table. So our first field is going to contain an ID, which is just going to store a unique identifier. If you don't know too much about databases, um, this is probably not the tutorial for it. This is going to be more like a crash course, but I might make some later down the track if uh, people need it. So first one's going to be ID. Uh, next field is going to be the name of our person. And lastly, it's going to be what score they got. We're going to make sure the ID is auto-incrementing and it's our primary field. And that will do for the moment. We'll just save that. And there is our high scores table, now ready for getting data into it. So let's go ahead and put a couple of dummy entries in there for the moment. I'm just going to go to the Insert tab. Don't worry about the ID filling in because that auto-increments. Uh, we'll put in Jess for the first name and she scored 2500. And then we'll have John, and he scored 1,500. And I think I botched that up. Yep, I did when I created it. So just head over to the structure. Uh, name should not be an integer. So I'm just going to change that. Name should be a varchar, and we'll allow up to 100 characters. Varchar is basically um, a string. So you can type in letters as well as numbers. So that's better. Let's go back to insert and go with Jess. Oops. 
2500 and John 1500. Okay, so back over in our high scores table, uh, we've got two dodgy entries here, so we'll just delete those. And that's fine. Don't worry about the ID being not 1 and 2. Uh, the end user is never going to see that anyway. So Jess and John, two scores. So that's great for the moment. Uh, what we're going to do now is get our connection um, software or our connection sort of middleman to connect from the database and work with Flash. And to do that, we're going to be using this thing called AMFPHP. So head along to silixlabs.org. AMFPHP and go to the download section and we're going to be working with the legacy AMFPHP 1.9. Uh, you can use a 2.1 um, I've had varying results with it sometimes it's faster sometimes it's slower but for our purposes the 1.9 is more than enough to create a high scores table so just grab that one. So once you've got that um, we're gonna go to our UAMP directory into our WW folder and right now we've just got an index in there but what we're going to be doing is putting our AMF PHP in there so I've got mine downloaded here, I'm just going to drag it in and I'm going to extract it into this folder and we don't need the zip file anymore or Mac OS X directory and I'm just going to edit this name and make sure there's no spaces in it so in fact get rid of the 1.92 just AMF PHP, that'll do. And that's got all the files we need to connect up to a service, and I'll explain more about that in a second. So if we go back to our WAMP, head back to our WW site, you can see our projects. We've got AMF PHP in here. If we click on that, and we go to the browser. This opens up a sort of like a mini flash viewer, and all the settings in here are pretty much stock standard, so you don't really need to touch them. Um, that's our gateway address. We'll be needing this later on. And our encoding is going to be AMF3, action message format. So press save on that. And if everything went according to plan, if we scroll this down, we go to the discovery service, you should see a couple of test um, methods in here for this discovery service. And we're going to be creating a service, our own custom one, to connect up to our database in just a second. So, once we've got this going, we've got AMF PHP, we've got our UAMP server going. What we're going to do is head over into Flash Develop. Actually, now into Flash, and I'm just going to save this in a projects folder. So, you can put this file that you've downloaded off the net into your USB drive or wherever you're working from. Mine's in my G drive, UAMP WW folder. So, this is where our AMF PHP is but I'm also going to put in another folder called um, high scores and that's just our project folder okay so that's in there now let's fire up flash develop and we're going to be creating a new project in here so project new project action script 3 flash IDE project and we'll call this high scores and the location is going to be in our USB drive, in our WW folder of our UAMP, and in high scores. Make sure correct directory for project is unticked because we don't need that. And directory is not empty, that's fine. And I just installed Flash Develop, so it'll prompt me for my name. Okay, I'm just going to move this over here so it's easier for you guys at home to see. And just like we've always done, we're going to create a document class. So I'm going to right click on the project name, add new class, I'm going to call this main, and it's going to extend. Uh, now, if you ever get this problem where you don't get any of the classes listed here, just press cancel, um, type in our main name, press OK, and then just type in extends movie clip. You can see this little blue line came up just because Java wasn't running uh, previously, and now it is, so now it's listing all the classes. So we'll save that, and we'll head back over to our Flash project, 
and I'm just going to type in main here for our document class and just to make sure everything's linked up and running I'm just going to put a trace in here and say document class running save that give it a test and it can't find flash okay let's configure that it's my C drive um, Adobe flash okay let's try that again and that's working pretty good this window is really huge so I might actually resize that and document class running so I'll make this um, 320 by 480 that's better and I'll just shrink everything here you can leave yours at home the same size as the download if you want just for the video tutorial I think it'll be better if it's a bit smaller so that way when we test it should actually show up in the recording area okay so that's working. Um, so we're getting an error about font embedding. So I'm just going to click on one of these fields and I'm going to go to embed and just embed uppercase, lowercase, numerals and punctuation. And because all the fonts are the same, we only need to do it on one field and that should fix that problem. Okay, so there's our flash up and running. We've got a document class set up. Now we need to get an AMF PHP service to connect up to our database. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new PHP file in here. And actually, no, we won't create it in here. I'll just make a new PHP document instead. Flash develop, you can do PHP as well, gotta love it. So what we're going to be doing in here is creating a service. So just like the one we saw in here, which is called discovery service. This service is going to connect up to our database. It's going to allow us to get all the high scores as well as submit a new high score. So those are going to be our two methods. So, so to get started, I'm just going to go to, oh, I'm going to go to this file. Sorry, I'm going to, the zoning out here, it's getting pretty late. Should have started this earlier. Anyway, I'm going to make a new PHP class. And I'm going to call it game scores. So we're going to be using this thing called PDO. So if you've used a MySQL connection before in PHP, you've usually used like MySQL underscore connect or MySQL I connect. And that's fine. You can go ahead and use that method if you want as well. But we're going to be using PDO. And what PDO is, it stands for PHP data objects. And You'll see in a second, it just makes life so much easier when you're connecting to MySQL, as well as retrieving values and putting values back in. There's a lot of handy, helpful features. And um, yeah, let's get started with that. So we know we're going to be making two um, methods that we need to run in this service. The first one's going to be adding a score to the database. and we'll just give that a public function name of add score and this is going to accept two parameters it's going to be taking in a name so I'm going to put dollar sign name and then dollar sign score for those two variables and then likewise we need to get all the scores from the database and we'll create another public function which we can use and we'll call this um, get scores and that's not going to accept any parameters because it's just going to get all the scores and that's pretty much the only two we need for this service so that should be fine I'm just going to save this file and I'm going to put it in a certain folder I'm going to put it in my USB under UAMP in the WW folder and this time it's going to go into our AMF PHP folder into our services folder. This is where we place all our services. That's nicely named. And this file name has to be called exactly the same name as our class name. So I'm going to call it game scores 
with a capital G and an S. It's got to be exactly the same. So save that and if we head over to our service browser and we refresh we should see a game score show up here now. So we've made a PHP class and it's now in the service browser of AMF PHP. So now let's actually get this to do something. The first thing we need to do is obviously connect to our database. So what we're going to do is make a constructor function in PHP. Now constructor functions are a little bit different in PHP compared to ActionScript 3. Instead of uh, constructor function being the same name as our class name, how PHP wants to define it is with a public function and then underscore underscore construct. And that is going to run any code in here as soon as this class gets initialized. So what we want to do is connect to our database using PDO. So if you've never used PDO before, just head along to a little helpful area. So PDO MySQL. And the PHP manual always has good stuff in here. So I'm just going to scroll down a little bit until we find a connection string, which is over here. So basically to initialize a PDO, we create a new PDO object in PHP and we tell it our driver is going to be MySQL, where our host is, the port name we don't really need because it's always default, and then a database name along with our username and password. And don't worry about persistent, we're not going to be needing that because we're using a service. So in fact I'm just going to copy this line, make things nice and easy, and go into our construct function. And what we're going to be doing is actually making this database handler a class object. So in um, Action Script Tree, when we want to make a class object, we stick it above our constructor function. In PHP, what we're going to do is we're going to refer to this class with a dollar sign this, and then we're going to define a database object in this class. So this is going to be called database handler, and we're going to be making that a new PDO object. Our host is going to be localhost instead of three X's because that's where our server is running on, on our localhost. The port we don't actually need because that's default. And our database name, if we look down here, it's called game db or game underscore db. Uh, the next set of X's is the username to get into the database. So um, if you're using UAMP, the default username and password to access um, phpMyAdmin and any of the databases in there is root for the username and root for the password. So I'm going to put root in here and root for the password. And we don't need the persistent connection because we're using a service, so we can get rid of that. So that sets up our connection to our database, selects our database, and inputs all the right credentials in one line. So the next thing we'll do is we'll get our get scores going, because um, using PDO is slightly a bit different than using your normal MySQL methods. But if you are using MySQL methods, feel free to use them. Just put the connection string in this constructor up here. And in our get scores uh, method, what we're going to be doing is querying our database and getting all the results. So put a couple of comments in. Query the database for all high scores. And then we're going to get, actually let's fetch all the results. And finally return the results. So for querying the database, we're going to set up a new query object. And we're going to be referring to our database handler to connect to the database. So I'm going to go this, database handler. And then we're going to run a query from there. So we can chain everything together in PDO. So 
So our query goes in here, and we're going to use a really simple MySQL query for this. Um, if you once again, if you've never used MySQL before as well, um, it's probably not the place to learn it. This is just going to be a crash course, but we want to grab everything from our high scores table. So we'll do a select everything from high scores and we'll order by our score descending. And finally we need to fetch all the results. So I'm going to store this in a result variable and we'll say our query object. Let's fetch all the results and we're going to use a static method that comes with PDO and it's going to be PDO colon colon fetch associative or SOS and then finally we need to return the results to our service so it can pass it on to flash so I'm going to say return result and let's save this and give it a test let's see if this works so I'm going to go over to our localhost into our service browser, just going to refresh that. Go to our game scores, and we should see we've got an add score and a get score method here. Now let's go to get scores and call it. And you can see here in our output, we've got well, let's go to our tree view actually. We've got two objects that come in. First object um, is Jess for 2500, and our next object is John for 1500. So we've su successfully connected to our database and we've got those two values out. So that's great. Get scores method is working. Add scores, because we've put in two uh, parameters into our service class here, the service browser tells us that we need to input these two in order for the function to work. But at the moment we have got no code in there, so it's not going to do or return anything. So let's get that up and running. What we're going to do in our add score is we're going to prepare an SQL statement and then bind a couple of values to it and then run it. So with PDO you don't have to put everything into one line like you normally would with MySQL and escape the characters and then check for SQL injection and then do all that other really time consuming mundane stuff which I'm sure most people hate. Uh, with PDO it becomes a lot simpler. There's a little bit more typing involved but it's much much cleaner to read and easier to update down the track. So the first thing we're going to do is prepare an SQL statement for adding a score to the database. The next thing we're going to do is bind our values to the statement. And then finally we're going to execute the statement. and then we might return if it's a success or a fail. Okay, so to prepare an SQL statement, we're going to be creating a statement method. And I'll just call that statement for short. And once again, we're going to be referring to this classes database handler variable and we're going to be running a prepare statement on that. So once again all of this stuff prepare, query, fetch all, they're all in the PDO documentation here so feel free to read through that and there's a lot of helpful um, tips and procedures that people have put in here all in the comments so read through some of that if it's a little bit above your head for the moment. And I might make another tutorial if people ask just on uh, PDO and MySQL. So we're going to prepare a statement. And in that statement, we're going to be inserting a value into our database. So insert into high scores. We're going to be inputting a name and a score. And the two values we want to put in are just going to be question mark and question mark for the moment. 
Okay, so this is one of the handy things about PDO. You don't have to put in your name and score into here and escape out of single brackets, I mean single quotes, then re um, concatenate the value with uh, two dots like that. You can just put a couple of question marks in there and then bind values into those question marks. So what we're going to do here is, in our statement, we're going to bind a value into the first question mark slot and we're going to put in our name. And I'm just going to, I'll type it out. Statement, bind value into the second question mark and we're going to put in our score. So whatever we input in for our name and score, they get input into these two question marks as the first and second, which is pretty handy. So if this statement ever changes and you need to add more um, data to the query, you can just add more question marks and then bind values, which is nice and clean down here instead of going through your whole query every time. And finally, we're going to execute the statement. So statement and execute. And finally, we'll just return it to see if it's uh, true or false. So return our statement. And that's pretty much it for adding our scores to the database. Let's see if this actually works in our service browser. I'm going to go back to our service browser, give it a refresh. Go to game scores, add score, and let's try putting in another name. Bobby, and we'll say... I scored 3,500. Let's call that and it looks like it worked. Let's have a look at our MySQL. If we go here, we can see Bobby's score has been added to the database now. So we've set up a PHP um, service and that's now connecting to our database. And now we can run and we can call this service from within Flash, which is what we're going to be setting up now. So, our database is running, we've got the service going, okay, we can head over to Flash and start working on our class file here. So, first things first is we've got a couple of fields out here, which we don't have in our class at the moment, so name one and score one, and all the way up to five. So, let's make them public instances so we can target them in our document class. So, I'm going to create a public var for name one. That's going to be a text field. And I'm going to duplicate this five times by pressing Control D and just changing around a couple of numbers. And then I'm going to just copy one for score and duplicate that five times and just add those numbers back in. Okay, so we can target all of our text fields now. So as soon as we get into our class, we're going to run a function called setupConnection. And this is going to set up our gateway service connection so we can connect to AMFPHP. So I'm just going to create a private function out of that. So we're going to firstly create a new net connection. And then finally we're going to connect to that net connection. New net connection. Yep. Okay. So I'm going to create a variable. It's going to be called um, con for connection. And that's going to be a net connection object. I'm going to create a new net connection out of that. And finally, we're going to use our connection object, and we're going to connect to a gateway. So the first thing we need to do here is just input a string to the gateway. And our gateway, if we look down here in our service browser, in fact, if we go back one, you can see a gateway.php file here. If we click on that, this is our gateway location. So I'm just going to copy that. And we can go back to the service browser in case we need it. And I'm going to put the gateway connection in here. So that's pretty much it for our connection. We've 
um, set up a new net connection and we've connected to it. Now we need to just make this connection a class member. So I'm going to promote it to be a class member. So it's up here. And that means we can access it wherever we need to too. So after we set up our connection, let's get all our high scores. So I'm going to create another function for that. Create a private function. And here we're going to be using our net connection. We're going to connect to it and retrieve the high scores using that get scores method that we set up before in our PHP service. So I'm going to use our connection object and we're going to run a call to our service and that call is going to be our package name. So our package name is called game scores. And the method that we want to call, which we can use after a dot, is our get scores method. So after we call that, we need to be able to either test whether we got something back or it failed and it didn't work. So this is where we use a responder. So in fact, I'm just going to put some comments in here too. Let's create a responder object first. and then we run a call to our service. So our responder object is just going to be a variable, we'll call it res. That's a responder and we'll give it a new responder object and this is um, telling us uh, we need two functions to, to provide it. One is when a result comes back uh, successful and the other one is when it fails and it doesn't come back properly. So we'll just go to some default methods called on result and on fail. And I'm just going to create these two functions by generating private functions. And the two objects that we get coming into each of these functions is just an object, a generic object type. So I'm going to press, I'm going to type in O and data type that to an object and likewise here say O and an object and we'll leave that for the moment we're going to be using something else to actually see what these objects are so now that we call our gateway and our methods here we pass it our responder and the responder is going to handle whether it's a true or a false um, return method so for the moment, I'll just put in a couple of traces in here, which will say um, results, or I'll just put in failed, and trace success. So when we run this, we should see our connection get set up. And let's put a trace in here as well. Setting up gateway connection. So after we set up the connection, we'd run our high scores, which is over here. We set up a responder and we run a call and it's either going to echo failed or success. So let's save this, give it a test. And we set up a gateway connection and we have an error. Net connection call bad version. Now this is going to happen sometimes because of the legacy AMF PHP. And to fix this, I'm just going to go into flash develop and open up a file. So in our www folder of AMF PHP, I'm just going to open up the gateway file. And down here, it gives a lot of instructions as to what's going on in the AMF PHP service. But one of the things I had to change in order to get this to work is where it says define production server true, just change that to false. It's not a production server, so we need debugging and we need to find out what's going on. So just save that and go back to our main AS and test again and this time we should see setting up gateway connection and success so we've successfully got those names back but how do we tell what objects has come back well we can use the service browser here so our game scores get score and call and you can see our tree view at least returns three objects and in each of these objects we have an ID name and a score
but suppose you were connecting somewhere and you didn't have this service browser how do you tell what objects are coming back if we tried to just run a simple trace on the object like that save and test all we get is a generic objects coming back and there's no real way to tell what's inside these objects just from using the flash trace so what we're going to be doing is using another handy piece of software which is available for free called monster debugger now this thing is awesome for testing all sorts of projects not just ones for the web you can test it for mobile as well and it really it really does help you out when you're stuck and you have no idea what's going on behind the scenes monster debugger can make pretty much your programming life a very big difference in ActionScript. So go ahead and download Monster Debugger 3. Uh, it is an Adobe Air file, so you will need Adobe Air, I think at least 3.4 to run it. So it should automatically install Adobe Air anyway. I've got mine installed already, so I'm just going to fire it up. And this is what you get when you run Monster Debugger. So we'll get started using Monster Debugger, just a really quick crash course, but if you go to their website, and you go to the home page uh, there's a really they've actually turned it into a game so if you run monster debugger the game it shows you how to use monster debugger while debugging a game and it's a really good tutorial to go through if you want to find out more so highly recommend that as well so anyway in monster debugger we're going to go to file export swick and this monster debugger swick includes all the classes that we need to debug our content in here so I'm going to go to my computer and my USB drive, our UAMP folder and our high scores and I'm just going to put the SWIC file in here. So when we go to flash develop you can see we've got monster debugger SWIC in here. I'm just going to right click on that and add it to our library. And then in our flash project I'm going to go to file, uh, action script settings under our library path. I'm going to add a new path and we're going to add a SWIC file to that path and that's going to be our high scores SWIC. So now we've got our library. This is just basically a big code library of all sorts of action script files and it's just packaged into one file which is nice and easy for transport and now it's included in our flash project and our flash develop project so both of them know what uh, Monster Debugger is. So in order to get Monster Debugger running and to show you why it's so awesome and helpful uh, as soon as we start up our document class, I'm going to create a monster debugger instance. So let's actually import monster debugger first. So import monster, and that gives us monster debugger. So I'm going to go to monster debugger, which is our static class name, and we're going to initialize that debugging. And our base object is just going to be this movie clip or this uh, stage object. So anytime we want to trace, instead of using the flash default trace, we precede that with monster debugger. So monster debugger dot trace and the caller object, typically what I do is I put the function name in a string. So on result and then the object we want to actually debug and see what it's all about is going to be our object here, which is O. And those are the only two things we really need to supply. I'm going to copy this as well and put it into the on failed just so we can see if there's a failed message that comes up. And I'm going to replace that function name with that. So let's save this, give it a test. So you can see here in uh, normal flash, we've still got success and three objects coming up. But if we load up monster debugger, so this has still been running in the background. You can see here it's found our high scores movie and it's our main um, application and this is what the screen looks like at the moment and if you look down here we can see our on result and an array so why monster debug is so good is if you double click on this I'll move this into the recording area you can actually inspect all the objects in the array and see what their um, properties are so this is something that you can't really do with flash so if you're connecting to a gateway and you don't know what's going on in the objects you can find out here with monster debugger so we're getting a name, a score, name, score, as well as IDs, which we don't really need to do much with. And you'll notice that they're sorted going from top to bottom. So Bobby's got the highest score, which is 3,500, so he becomes object zero. 
and Jess comes second, and then John. So now that we've got this data, let's put it into our flash file. So these names actually show up at something. So to do that, after we get our results and it's successful, let's populate our high scores table. So to do this, I'm going to run through a loop because we have um, five scores and five names. So I'm just going to set up a for loop. I'm going to create a counter object for i. That's going to be an integer. We'll start off at zero. And as long as i is less than um, our objects that are coming in length. So this gives us three objects for the moment. Actually, now let's just go five. I plus plus. So what we need to do is we need to test if we actually have an object because right now we've only got three um, scores in our database but we have five names so if we were to loop through five times we'll get an error twice because we're missing two names and scores so uh, I guess the easy way to fix no 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 easy way we'll do it properly so test if we have a name so if uh, actually let's map our current object our current name score object will just be um, item that's going to be an object and that's going to be coming in from our O and whatever our I counter is up to so our object that comes in we've got three objects so the first object in our loop is going to be zero so that's I that goes in here so if our item dot name is equal to undefined actually let's put not equal to undefined then we will add the name in so we need to get our current name so once we loop through this loop we need to be able to get this name one value so what we're going to do is we'll create an object in here called name text that's going to be a text field and we will get child by name and the child we're going to get is name and we're going to be putting on our counter object plus one. So that's going to return name zero plus one, which, which will give us name one. And we'll have to map that as a text field. Yep, that should work. And then likewise for our score, I'm just going to duplicate that line and call this score text. That's going to be a text field. And that's going to be score plus i plus 1. So that should give us score 1, then score 2, then score 3. So that's if the name is not undefined, meaning we actually get a value. Otherwise, and what I should do is, because we're going to be using this more than once, I'm just going to cut this out of here and define it up here. So if we get a name that's undefined, we'll just set our name text field dot text to equal nothing and our score and on top of that score text field dot text to equal nothing as well. But if we do get something, we'll set our name text field dot text to equal as our item dot name so we're getting this from if we go to monster debugger in here our item is our currently selected object in our loop and we want the name property so item dot name gives us Bobby
and then our score text is going to be equal to our item dot score. So let's see if this works. Let's give it a save and a test. And you can see here, uh, cannot access property of null object reference. So that's probably going to be for the last two. But you can see we are getting the scores for Bobby, Jess, and John. Let's just fix that error up here. Because when you first start off a game, you're probably not going to have like five scores already in there, or 10 scores, or 20, or whatever you're shooting for. So let's fix that error and make sure that it works properly. So I think it's running through here. So it's not undefined, it's something else. Let's try null. Save that and test. And nope, oh, still have an error. So it's running through this five times. It can't find an item name and a score. So let's just trace out our item name and score and let's see what's going on. In fact, we'll use Monster Debugger to trace out that. So our name is going to be our item dot name. Let's save and test that and fire up monster debugger. So we've got name, name, name and then nothing comes in afterwards. Okay, so how do we fix that? So we'll just put in blank I guess. And nope, still an error can access method of null object reference. So we're still looping through this another two times, I think. In fact, let's just make sure by going to publish settings and in our advanced, we will permit debugging. Test that and we've got an error on line 64. So yeah, it's coming in from here. So in fact, if we get rid of that, that might actually work maybe? Nope. It's definitely not null. Nope. Okay, what we'll do is we will cut out this the name and the else and what we'll do is instead of looping through five times we'll just loop through our object that we're getting in and the length of the objects. So we're only getting three at the start, so this will run only three times and we won't get an error. So if we test that, we'll see that works with no error. But instead of having these name and score values here, what I'll do is I'll just delete them all from our flash file itself. And that will be a simple solution to a complicated fix. So that works. Okay, so we're getting the scores now. That is fantastic. But now how about adding scores to the database? So just say your user has finished their game, you've gotten to the high score screen, and this is the area where you want to submit their high score. So what we'll do is we will set up another function here. We'll call it add score or add user score. And we'll just do this as a behind the scenes type of um, function. So typically what you do is you'd create a little input box where you'd ask the user to input their name and you'd show their score, what they got, and then get them to press submit. But you already know how to set up buttons and um, how to set up input fields. So we've done all that stuff before. So I'll leave that up to you. And what we'll do here is we'll just connect to the gateway and actually submit that score. So once you've got the value from that text field with the user's name and you have their score already in your game anyway, you'll just take those two values and pass it into this function here. So when we add a user score, our connection is already set up. So what we need to do is use our connection object and we're going to call a method. So the first thing we need to do is connect to our um, service, which is our game score service. And the next thing we need to do is run a method in there. In this case, it's going to be called add score. So add score. And the responder object, this time we're going to set up a new responder for adding scores. So I'll make this one a bit more descriptive. So 
var responder for add score. That's going to be a new responder object, and we'll call it on add score success and on add score fail. And we'll create these two functions. And once again, just like our fail objects and our success objects down here, they're both going to be getting an object in. So we're calling our add score method. Uh, the responder is going to be responder add score. And this time we need to send it two variables. So after the responder add score, we can pass in our custom variables. So just say the user entered their name and it was um, Amanda. And then Amanda scored, say, 5,500. That's how we'd pass in those two values into our connection call with um, our parameters passed in straight after. So if we run this now, in fact, let's run add score before we get high score just to see that it is working. So what we'll do is we'll submit the score to the database and then we'll get the score and we should see Amanda on top of the leaderboard. So let's save that, give it a test. And you can see here Amanda's been added to the database. She's got 5,500. We've got four objects coming in now. So that method is working as well. So let's see, it's almost an hour. Um, yeah, okay, why not? You talked me into it. What we're going to do is we're going to create that little field down here. And we'll create an input text field so people can enter their name and a score just to see another couple working examples. So this will be our name. And this will be a score. And I'm going to go through this a little bit quicker than normal because this kind of stuff we've done before in previous tutorials. So our input name, we'll call it name input. Actually, input name, that's better. And then input score. Yep, so those two work. And then lastly, we'll create a button to actually submit that score into the database. Not going to make this super fancy. So add score, that does not need to be input, that can be static. And I'm just going to select these two and align them together. That's better. We'll turn that into a movie clip. Add score button. And we'll call this add score button as well for the stage. Okay, so we've got input name, input score, and add score button. And I'm just going to blank these two out for the moment, as well as give them an outline so that people know that they can type something in there. Okay, so let's add those two public, um, we'll add those three public areas to our document class. It's public var, and I've forgotten already, it's getting late, input name, input score, and that is a text field public var, input score, that's also a text field, and public var, damn what did I call it again, add score button. And that is just going to be a sprite. Yeah, we don't need anything fancy for that. Okay, so after we set up our connection, let's set up input area. That'll do. I'm going to create a public function out of that. So what we want to be able to do is target our add score button, add an event listener to it. So when the user clicks on it, we'll run a method called add new score. And we'll create a mouse handler event out of that. So in this add new score, 
what we're going to do is we're going to get the value from our name and score input fields and then we're going to add the score to the database or we'll actually add the score yeah to the database and finally we'll refresh the scores okay so our two values into our text fields they're going to be input name and input score and you'll probably want to do some validation here to make sure that you know the user actually inputs a name I'm not going to include that for here it's just an if statement to see if the text field is empty or not and what we're going to do is in fact we'll just borrow this line here yeah we'll stick it in here um, instead of saying Amanda what we'll do is we'll put in our input name text whatever that's equal to and then our input score dot text whatever that's equal to so this is going to be dynamic now so we don't actually even need to get the values from our name and score fields I'm just sort of rushing through this as you can tell I've got about four minutes left um, input name input score that's great and then let's refresh the high scores so what we can do is we can just run get high scores as soon as we input the name in in fact we'll run get high scores after we get an add success so that doesn't even need to be up here it can be down here once we add a score successfully to the database let's get scores to refresh okay so let's save and we've got add user score in here for the moment so let's get rid of that we don't want Amanda being added every time we run this um, function so that was good for testing but now we've actually got something that's more dynamic so let's give that a test we've got our scores coming in so let's say we add Jill and she scored 7600 so she should be on top of the leaderboard let's add that score and there you go there's Jill added to the database and if we look in our database you can tell that there's no witchcraft or sorcery going on there is actually scores being added and let's just see one more time we'll add um, oh no, Yule yeah we've got Yule he sounds cool 3750 let's add him to the database and he pushed out someone else down the bottom but here is the score so there you have it you can see how we oh we've got an error access denied oh that's right because our score objects here the length is gone beyond the amount of name fields that we have so in fact once that happens dot length actually let's do one quick change we'll just say if o dot length is greater than five then we will actually let's create a variable here for our count a loop count that's gonna be a number we'll set it to zero to start off with if our objects length that we get in is greater than five our loop count will be equal to five otherwise our loop count will be equal to our o dot length so basically what that does is if we have less than five objects coming in we're going to get the length of our object array so if it's four our loop count will be four we'll only loop through this four times but otherwise even if we get ten results in in fact, we shouldn't even do this in here. What am I doing? Just get rid of all that. Just save that. And what we should do is in our game scores PHP, where we're getting our scores from the database, let's just limit the results by five. Let's save that. Give it a test. 
and there we go no errors okay that's what we should have done from the start so anyway there you have it there is a tutorial on connecting to a database using AMF PHP as a middleman interpreter to get the scores and then send it into flash and then also create methods on how to retrieve and add values to that database straight from flash so I hope you got something out of this guys and um, yeah stay tuned for more videos coming up soon see ya